Question 10. In a 12 volt lighting circuit, four lamps are connected in parallel. If each lamp is rated 6 watts, what current will flow in the circuit? And then we've got our four options, 48 amps, 0.5 amps, 24 amps or 2 amps. Well, first off, I'm just going to bring in an image of uh, a parallel circuit. So we have our live line, our live input and our earth return. And then we're going to put our four lamps. There's one, two, three, four of them arranged in a parallel circuit. OK, so <clears throat> what we need to to be able to calculate uh, the answer is we need our Ohm's law triangle. And it, this time it's the one with watts in it. So uh, watts, volts and amps arranged in our Ohm's law triangle like this. Um, now, we need to calculate the wattage in this circuit. So I'm just going to blank out the watts there. And as I say, this is what we need to calculate. Now, what we know is we have four lamps and each of them is six watts. So basically, we just need to multiply the wattage by however many lamps there are. So that's four times six. Uh, so four lamps at six watts each. That is 24 watts. So we can put 24 in the top of our triangle there. Now we also know that the circuit is supplied by a 12 volt supply. So if we drop 12 down into the volts section, and now we should be able to calculate the amperage because amperage is uh, the watts divided by volts. So 24 divided by 12, which is equal to two. So now we know our answer is two amps. Okay, this is question 11. Which of the following is located in the induction system to sense manifold pressure? Do we use a hall generator, a Zener diode, a MAP sensor, or a Lambda sensor? Uh, hopefully you are now aware of what a Lambda sensor is. That's in the exhaust for measuring oxygen. A hall generator uh, is a, a sensor that generates um, signals for wheel speeds or engine speeds. A Zener diode, where you know a diode is a one-way uh, valve or only allows electricity to flow one way. And so a MAP sensor is the correct answer. Uh, I'll just show you what they look like. They are in the induction manifold. So they're in the manifold. This is the sensor here. Uh, and as I said, it's sort of uh, fitted to the manifold to sense the pressure. Uh, what MAP stands for is Manifold Absolute Pressure Sensor. All right, so it's a MAP sensor, Manifold Absolute Pressure. Just going to bring in another image to show you what they look like when they're removed. So they come in different shapes and sizes, um, but they are fitted to the induction manifold, the inlet manifold. Let's move on to the next question. So question 12 is, when the starter switch is operated, the pre-engaged starter motor turns the engine very slowly. Which of the following is not a possible cause of the fault? Now, it's important to emphasize that we are looking for something that doesn't cause the fault. So it's not a possible cause. So the first option is a defective roller clutch. And that's on the starter motor. I'm just going to bring in an image. Uh, so this pinion gear here that engages with the flywheel has a one-way clutch. Now, if that is defective, it would do one of two things. Uh, the engine either wouldn't turn at all because uh, the, the, there would be no drive coming from this, or uh, it would turn, uh, but it wouldn't turn slowly just because of that. 
that uh, the clutch itself doesn't influence the speed at which the motor turns. So we can pretty much say that that is not a cause of the fault. But let's just check the other answers. So the second one is a corroded battery connection. So I've just brought in this image and you can see the corrosion on our battery terminal. Now what that would do, um, the corrosion uh, acts as a resistance. It's difficult for electricity to work its way through this corrosion. And so there would be less electricity coming out the battery, which in turn would make the motor, the, the starter motor turn over slowly. So that would be a cause of the engine turning slowly. Uh, answer C, a partially discharged flat, uh, sorry, a partially discharged battery, which is uh, commonly called a flat battery. Well, if you've got uh, less electricity in the battery, then obviously the, the starter motor would turn slowly because of that. So that would also be a cause of the fault. And the last one, a loose starter cable. So this cable here that goes down to our st starter motor, if that was loose, uh, that would be the same as having corrosion. It would uh, offer a resistance, so less electricity would be able to escape uh, from the, the battery and go down to operate the motor. So uh, answers B, C and D would cause this problem, whereas the correct answer is A, a defective roller clutch is not a cause of the problem. So question 13 is the light bulbs in the car often fail and constantly need replacing. The most likely cause is, and then we've got some options here, A, defective shock, shock absorbers, B, defective voltage regulator, C, excessive use of the lamps, and D, a high resistant lighting switch. Okay, so let's start with eliminating the obvious non-starters. Uh, C, excessive use of the lamps. Um, if you have to keep constantly replacing the bulbs because they're blowing, because you've been using them too much, I think we'd be complaining to the manufacturers. The manufacturers need to redesign their lamps. So that's not the most likely uh, cause of the problem. It's highly unlikely to be honest. Uh, a high resistant lighting switch. If we've got a high resistance in the supply of electricity to the lamp, then less electricity will get through that high resistance. So the lamp won't be working that hard and is highly unlikely to blow. In fact, it would be dim, but it wouldn't blow the lamp. So C and D are ruled out. Let's have a look at A, defective shock absorbers. I'm just going to bring in an image of our shock absorber so we know what we're talking about. Um, so we're talking about the spring and this here is the shock absorber. Now theoretically, if this is defective, your car will bounce around and maybe that would damage your, your lamps. But uh, I don't think it's likely. I don't think I've ever come across it myself. So it's possible, but it's not likely. So in fact, I would say it's highly unlikely. So that leaves us with a defective regulator. Now to understand that, let me just get rid of the image of the uh, shock absorber. To understand the voltage regulator, uh, we just need to have a look at how lamps work. Okay, so I brought in an image of a lamp and I'm just going to add some scribbles. Okay, so our electricity will flow in through this contact on the bottom of the lamp and then there is a wire inside which we can't normally see that connects to this. And then the electricity flows through this filament as it's called. And this is made of tungsten usually and offers up quite a high resistance before the electricity can flow to this contact and then onwards in the rest of its circuit. So as the electricity flows through this tungsten filament, which offers a very high resistance, it has to work really hard because of that resistance. And it works so hard that the electricity causes uh, the filament to get hot. And it gets so hot that it glows and gives off light. So that's essentially how it works. Now, if we've got a defective voltage regulator, by the way, the regulator is usually inside the alternator. Um, so the alternator is driven from the engine 
And if we rev the engine up, then obviously this is going to go faster and we will produce more electricity at a higher voltage. So if we constantly put a high voltage through here, we're going to be pushing more electricity and this would get so hot that it could melt. Uh, let me just show you that in this image here. So we've got this drawing of a filament that's got so hot that it's melted away, vaporized, and then the tungsten vapor has landed on the, the glass and you can see it's blackened the glass. I'll just bring in an image of an actual light bulb where this happened and you can see it's darker on the inside. So that's what's happened. The defective voltage regulator uh, has allowed too much voltage to go through the lamp filament and as a consequence it's melted and so that would constantly uh, need replacing because it's often failing. Okay question 14 an ammeter is connected in series with a 12 volt lamp and shows the current flow of two amps what is the power rating of the lamp? So to answer this question, we're going to need our Ohm's law triangle, and it's the one that has watts in. Just bring that in. So it's this triangle, and that shows us that uh, watts is equal to volts multiplied by amps. Just show you that there. Okay, so now basically all we need to do is to slot in the information that we have. Now we know that it's a 12 volt lamp. So let me just clear the volts from that image and we're drop down the fact that it's 12 volts. And we also know that we've got two amps. So let me clear the amps and it's two amps. So if we put two into the box there. Okay, so now we know that to find the wattage, the, which is the power, uh, it's 12 multiplied by 2. So the watts is equal to 12 multiplied by 2, which is 24. Okay, so theoretically now we've got our answer. Just be careful because if you look at the options here, uh, we've got two options which say 24. One is 24 ohms and one is 24 watts. Remember our answer is watts. Okay, the power is measured in watts. So the answer in this case is D, 24 watts.